Were Jesus Christ, his mother, the Virgin Mary, and his people black or white? This has been a long debated question. Europe has always tried to depict Jesus as a fair white man with blue eyes, long blonde hair, and tall height. This was further strengthened by paintings from the 15th century, where Jesus appeared much like a typical European man. But does this prove Jesus was white? Well, not necessarily. The recent 14th and 15th century paintings revealed by Russia prove that Jesus was not white but black. He, his mother, and the people around him were all black. That's a groundbreaking revelation questioning why Europe depicted Jesus as white until now. So what have we found in the centuries-old Russian cellars and vaults? What people have been shown in the paintings found in these vaults that completely change biblical teachings? Let's know about that in this video. Recently, news surfaced that Russian President Vladimir Putin has ordered the relocation of one of Russia's most sacred icons from a museum to a Moscow cathedral. For centuries, these paintings remained locked in vaults, but now the world has the chance to observe them. This fundamentally changes our understanding of Jesus, his mother, and his disciples. These paintings are called the Russian icons, which are collections of hundreds, hundreds of paintings depicting Jesus' era and his life. In Russian icons, Father Vladimir Ivanov explores Russian iconography in depth, offering insights into the history, symbolism, and spiritual significance of these sacred artworks. Authored by a distinguished expert in the field, Father Ivanov presents readers with a comprehensive overview of Russian iconography, covering various aspects. However, even if the artworks show various instances, they have one similarity. They show Jesus, his mother, people, and even angels as black. Father Ivanov discusses the artistic techniques used in Russian icon painting, including the application of egg tempera paint, gold leaf, and traditional iconographic methods such as hieratic composition and stylized forms. Examining the role of icons in orthodox devotional practices, including veneration, processions, and their use in private and public worship, the book illuminates the profound impact of icons on believers' spiritual lives. Some of the paintings even depict the pre-Jesus era. For example, Andrei Rublev's Trinity illustrates the biblical story of three angels visiting the patriarch Abraham at the Oak of Mamre, as described in the book of Genesis. Within Christian belief, this event represents the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, revealing themselves to Abraham as three guests. However, there is something shocking in this painting. The complexion of all those present in the painting is dark and black. A famous painting savior in a golden reza typically features an icon portraying Jesus Christ adorned with a golden reza. In Orthodox Christian tradition, a reza is a metal covering or frame that embellishes and often made from gold or silver. The primary focus of the painting is Jesus Christ, depicted in the traditional Orthodox iconography. He is commonly depicted with a halo around his head, symbolizing his divine nature. His facial expression may vary, often conveying compassion, serenity, or solemnity, reflecting his role as the savior and spiritual guide. Interestingly, Jesus is depicted in a dark brown or black reflection. The golden reza surrounding the icon of Jesus is intricately designed, featuring elaborate patterns, engravings, and sometimes gemstones. It signifies the reverence and value attributed to Christ's image in Orthodox worship. Moreover, the reza serves as a visual reminder of the magnificence and majesty of God reinforcing the belief in Jesus as the divine Son of God. Then comes the painting Theotokos of Vladimir, which is deeply revered within the Orthodox Christian tradition. It depicts the Virgin Mary, also known as the Theotokos, cradling the infant Jesus in her arms. The term Theotokos translates to God-bearer or Mother of God, highlighting Mary's role as the Mother of Jesus, who is believed to possess both human and divine nature. Interestingly, both Jesus and his mother appear non-white with their complexion leaning toward black color. Mary has a calm expression in the painting, tenderly holding Jesus, supporting his body with one hand while gently caressing his cheek with the other. Jesus is portrayed as a young child, often extending his right hand in a gesture of blessing. Among the Russian icons found in the vaults is Ostyug Annunciation, a painting that completely redefines angels' appearances. This painting portrays the Annunciation, a significant event in the Christian tradition where the Archangel Gabriel informs the Virgin Mary that she will conceive and give birth to Jesus, the Son of God. Both Gabriel and the Virgin Mary are depicted as black. In no way do they have a fair complexion, blue eyes, and blonde hair. Another famous painting is Elusa, which, which means tenderness or compassion in Greek. In religious art, it represents a specific depiction of the Virgin Mary cradling the infant Jesus in a close embrace with their cheeks touching. This portrayal highlights the intimate bond between mother and child, symbolizing Mary's role as a compassionate intercessor and protector of humanity. In this painting, we see the same pattern, and both Jesus and his mother appear darker. Let's continue now. 
In the collection is a painting titled Our Lady of St. Theodore, which shows the Virgin Mary holding the infant Jesus, often portrayed as a young child, with her right hand raised in a gesture of blessing. The Virgin Mary is linked with the protection of Constantinople and is revered as a guardian and patroness of the Byzantine Empire. Again, we see both Jesus and his mother as black, not white. This might cause people to think that perhaps only Jesus and his mother were black. Well, the fact is, according to these paintings, the people among whom Jesus and his mother lived were also black. The famous painting titled Jesus with John the Baptist and the Virgin in the collection shows the mediation of John the Baptist and the Virgin Mary. In this painting, John the Baptist and the Virgin Mary are depicted in a position of authority and judgment alongside Christ, known as Christ the Judge or Christ Pantocrator. John the Baptist and the Virgin Mary are shown with raised hands in prayer, appealing to Christ on behalf of humanity. Another painting from the collection titled Christ Pantocrator presents Christ as the Pantocrator, signifying almighty and all-powerful. Jesus' complexion is dark and black while he is depicted as the ruler and judge of the universe, with his right hand raised in blessing and his left hand holding a gospel book, symbolizing his role as the word of God. This portrayal emphasizes Christ's sovereignty, authority, and divine majesty. After seeing these paintings, the earlier doubts about Jesus' heritage and complexion become valid concerns. Jesus' black heritage holds historical significance, situating him in a specific time and place, much like his followers. For centuries, the prevailing depiction of Jesus Christ, particularly in Western cultures, has been as a fair-skinned man with long, wavy, light brown or blonde hair, often portrayed with blue eyes. However, the Bible does not physically describe Jesus, and an evidence suggests he likely looked quite different from this traditional portrayal. Biblical narratives indicate Jesus was a Jewish man born in Bethlehem and raised in Nazareth, Galilee during the first century. While the Bible mentions Jesus beginning his ministry around the age of 30, it offers little detail about his physical attributes, except to suggest that he did not possess remarkable beauty or stand out physically as Isaiah 53 2 implies. Another mention is in Revelation 11:15, where John has a vision of Jesus. It describes his hair as white like wool, his eyes as fiery, his feet as glowing bronze, and his voice as powerful like rushing waters. Even though the depiction is not explicit, it clearly leans toward black features and physical traits. But why does Russia stand apart in depicting Jesus and his people as black in religious artworks? Well, the answer lies in the fact that Russia got disconnected from the Byzantine church when the whitewashing of religious paintings started. This was due to the Mongol invasion and occupation of Russia, known as the Golden Horde, which profoundly influenced the region's ties with the Byzantine Empire and the broader Christian world. Beginning in the early 13th century, the Mongols launched a series of military campaigns that resulted in the establishment of the Mongol Empire, one of history's largest continuous land empires. This expansion brought them into contact with various civilizations, including Russia. Until then, Russia had been in contact with the by the Chrysantine Empire, significantly adopting its religious beliefs. But in 1237, the Mongols launched a devastating invasion of the Russian principalities, which were fragmented and unable to mount a unified defense. The invasion culminated in the Battle of the Sit River in 1238, where the Mongols emerged victorious. Subsequently, they gained control over the region, establishing the Golden Horde as a vassal state and imposing tribute on Russian princes. The Mongol occupation significantly reshaped Russia's connections with the Byzantine Empire and the wider Christian world. Before the invasion, Russia had close ties with Byzantium, particularly in religious matters, as the Eastern Slavic peoples had embraced Byzantine Christianity. The Russian Orthodox Church regarded Constantinople, the Byzantine capital, as its spiritual center. However, the Mongol invasion disrupted these ties. With much of Russia under Mongol control, communication and trade routes suffered, severing contact with Byzantium. Additionally, the invasion strained the Russian Orthodox Church as the Mongols imposed their administrative structures, occasionally clashing with the Church's authority. It's believed that before the invasion, both Russia and the Byzantine Empire had similar artworks. However, after the invasion, the whitewashing of religious artworks began in Europe, unlike in Russia, which remained under Mongol rule for another 250 years. Consequently, Russia stands alone in preserving religious artworks where Jesus and his people are depicted as black, while, while the rest of Europe whitewashed such artworks. The religious artworks in Russia offer compelling evidence that until now, Jesus, his mother, and his people were portrayed inaccurately. Concealing Jesus' complexion altered the narrative, presenting him solely as the savior of white people, which did not align with the full story. However, acknowledging Jesus as black provides coherence, considering the parallels between the suffering endured by black people and that of Jesus. 
What do you think? Was Jesus black or white, given that he was from Israel, a region where black people lived? What's more opinion on why Europe tried showing Jesus, his mother, and his people as white? In the comments section right below, share your thoughts on whether all Jesus paintings should be changed and whether Jesus should be depicted in real complexion. Black, do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. African politics, economy, and increasing power. Thanks for watching Intervlog, and until the next video, stay tuned.